Scotland, Glasgow. People met Glasgow. In 2013, the brand was unveiled with pride, with Chamber of Commerce Chief Executive Stuart Patrick saying, now our job is to sell Glasgow to the world. But what is there to sell? What is there to be proud of? Why the selective forgetting? North America often comes to mind when remembering slavery, but the UK also participated in the carrying out of enslaving an estimated 12.8 million African people over 400 years. Scotland joined the Union in 1707 as they saw an opportunity to benefit from slavery. All Scottish families played their part, including the Oswalds, which are often overlooked. George Oswald, Minister of Donut, and had two sons. James Oswald and Richard Oswald, enslaver who owned plantations and enslaved people in Jamaica via his Harris wife, Mary Ramsey, bought huge estates in Scotland and got rich from developing the trading of enslaved people in Sierra Leone. James Oswald then had George Oswald, tobacco merchant, and Alexander Oswald of Shield Hall, sugar merchant. George Oswald had two sons, Alexander Oswald, who lived an affluent life thanks to his great uncles and overall family's wealth from enslaving Africans, and Richard Alexander, Liberal Party politician and co-owner of two plantations in Jamaica, and the 355 enslaved people attached to them. After the abolition of slavery, he, his wife, and members of her family were awarded compensation by the state for the loss of their enslaved property. Alexander of Shieldhall has several sons, among them a most influential one. James Oswald, politician whose statue sits proud on Jolt Square and who voted in favour of the abolition in hopes of being awarded compensation to, which he did and set up a trust for his children with. Even if some of the members of this family did not participate directly to slavery, they profited from the wealth their relatives made and should be held accountable, just like most white Scots should. This nation has a duty of remembrance as blood is on its people's hands individuals, each and every single one of them, tortured, bleeding, all for money. While the oppressors lived in mansions, the oppressed lived in small, unsanitary huts. Richard Oswald and his wife got their expensive portrait painted. James Oswald got his statue on the main square, but the only trace of the Africans they enslaved 